Hey everybody, Peter Reed Miller on Sports Photography by Peter Reed Miller. I'm here today with Jordan Naholoa Murph, a good friend of mine, an excellent photographer, very successful photographer, formerly a digital tech and assistant at Sports Illustrated. We've worked a lot of games together. Jordan's worked with a lot of other photographers. He's put up a lot of cameras. He's taken down a lot of cameras. So we're gonna tell you a little bit about some of the things we've done and some of the things that are important in setting up remotes. We'll be right back. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, what's important with remotes and uh, we're going to tell you some stories about what's, what can happen when remotes go wrong. Jordan, tell me, uh, tell me a little story. When remotes go wrong, let's say, you know, with any, you know, remote camera, you know, safety is the utmost priority because generally cameras are, you know, remote cameras are going to be put in precarious places where you can't physically be right. standing during an event so behind a you know behind a the glass at a basketball game overhead at a football or basketball game you know dangerous places and uh there has been some safety issues in the past with, with uh, certain photographers uh we're not naming names we're not naming names, we're not those kind of people stuff goes wrong you never yeah. want anything to go wrong you never want anything to go wrong to be, be because of you because then rules change forever yeah. in a bad way and then you know there's been situations where photographers, remote cameras have fallen out of catwalks on the field of play. Um, yeah, or, or on down to the ice at a, at a hockey game. Exactly. That's happened before, and you never want to be that person. No. Safety, yeah. safety, safety, safety. And that's why we use steel safety cables. Yes. You know, this yes. thing could probably hold up, you know, a thousand pounds, but you're going to yeah. put a five pound camera on it to make sure, you know, it doesn't fall, it doesn't slip. You never want that to happen. Right. Yeah. So, right. Safety cables and safety, you know, that, that safe mentality is the utmost priority whenever you're doing a, right. a remote camera. Have you had any horror stories in the past? <laughs> well, uh, usually, um, or almost always, uh, when you're putting up a remote, the arena hopefully is empty. Or certainly there's there's no one on, on, the, on the court or field of play or wherever. So... Things have fallen, uh, but nobody's been hurt. And I think that the real key is that the day that someone is injured by a, a remote camera will be the last day that we anybody ever puts a remote camera up above the crowd. Uh, I did um, in an arena, it's a little south of Los Angeles, um, that I did describe this a little bit. The catwalks were uh, two two by six boards hung from the ceiling with wires. And right beneath you was a false ceiling. So that gave you a false sense of security. Uh, and this was very early in my career. I knocked off, I knocked a coil of wire off and it just went right to that false ceiling and bam, right down. Did not hit the court, but it was a real, it was a gut clenching moment. And, uh, I think you always just have to be careful. I mean, uh, catwalks can be, they can be nice and solid and wide. Like you could, you could drive a, you know, you could drive a car down. I've mean, been some that you, you know, they're great. And others uh, are like, whoa, we're really gonna, okay, we walk out to here and then they say, but yeah, but up there is where you really need to be. Um, you know, Beijing, the catwalks are pretty shaky and, uh, but they did have, uh, we had safety harnesses. I once did a hockey game in Moscow uh, this was just after the fall of the Soviet Union, and uh, we went up in the catwalks, and it was just crazy wires everywhere. And the the building guy who took us up was clearly slugging on his vodka, and it was just really scary. So you can have that, or you can have something really nice. But uh, you know, going to different countries can lead to different experiences. And what what happened to you down in Rio, Jordan? Rio was a uh... For the 2016 Summer Olympics, it was definitely an experience. Uh, you know, safety was obviously a very big, you know, high priority. 
Um, we actually had to wear full rigging harnesses um, wow. that you know that roofers or construction workers would use just mm. to be able to step foot onto anything elevated over a field of play, which in in some cases became more of a safety hindrance when you have you know forty photographers wearing enormous harnesses. Uh, with cables attached to us, trying to move around a very confined space of a, a few <laughs> square feet. Uh, and to me, it became them. more of a safety. You know, I thought it was more of a safety uh, problem than hazard. Uh, but, yeah, yeah it was more of a hazard than anything else. Yeah. But that being said, um, Rio was definitely had its uh, its moments of uh, spooky times. <laughs> um, there were some places where the safety line for us to hook onto literally just went off the catwalk and dropped several hundred feet. Um, so. If you hooked onto it and you trusted it, that wouldn't really be You were in trouble. trouble. Um, but uh, at Maracanã, uh, which is essentially the national football stadium in, in Brazil, uh, where the opening and closing ceremonies took place in addition to uh, football, uh, we had to put cameras up for opening ceremonies, I believe it was three weeks ahead of time, uh, before opening ceremonies, which... You know, that's quite a ways out. Uh, yeah. You know, your batteries aren't going to last for three weeks. No, no. They're not going to stay dry in, you know, the Brazil summertime. It's going to yeah. rain. It's, you know, there's going to be animals up there. It's going to be people up there. So there's a lot of factors. And in addition to that, we had to deal with fireworks. Um, there was, you know, one of the biggest fireworks displays on the planet. Ever. Before you yeah. Used, yeah. If not ever was, uh, during, you know, for the opening ceremony. So we were up on this roof of this building um weeks ahead of time working with pyrotechnicians uh as they had live fireworks inch literally inches um from our cameras we had to put heat shields around our cameras we had to power run to the cameras um we had to put everything in weather sealed boxes it wasn't just walking up to put a floor camera up it was in reality years of logistical planning that uh you know our director of photography eric rascal took care of uh with the ioc but you know it still took hours and days over several days to get the camera up and uh in the end it was stolen after all those safety <laughs> precautions and locking it down someone stole it the night after opening ceremony so thankfully since it was networked into the network i had pictures down i got all the pictures off the camera but right. a ten thousand dollar rig my favorite ball head that i inherited i believe it was an ivan from you i think it was yeah I, it got it got stolen in addition to camera and lens and a bunch of other expensive things but safety up there working on you know up in Malacana, the the catwalk was up actually about this big uh maybe 18 inches at the most uh and it was actually next to a my father is a uh, professional roofer, so he, I heard this right. Is it was an amorphous roofing membrane? Was essentially it's a tent. It, there was there was a frame with a, a tent-like surface over it that was a couple millimeters thick, and we had to walk across it almost like a, a bouncy castle or trampoline, which was not the safest thing to do. And to get to where we need to go to the live fireworks, and there's just a lot of safety precautions, <laughs> yeah. something like that. This is an extreme example. This is probably this everything. Probably, you know, in all the thousands of remote cameras I've been able to put up, it was probably the most uh, uh, high stress situation and the most little fine minute details I remember. Yeah. But in the end, made a memorable picture out of it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that's really what it's about. It's, it, it's, you know, you put in the hard work and you put in a lot of the stress in the, in the front end hopefully make a special picture because there's no way uh we could have been up there photographing during that time that's uh, the remote camera was the only way to do yeah. that and yeah. so thankfully it made a picture it cost in the end several hours of um nightless uh, sleepless nights and a ten thousand dollar camera yeah. but it's a picture that's gonna last forever so, <laughs> thankfully <laughs> and that's that's the thing and 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 i i've said this before but you know um the remote is sort of the the icing on the cake it's it's going to get you something really great, but uh, but but your job is to be down there in the trenches making the the picture the main picture, and so the remote's either fantastic or well we put it up there, but you never know, and you got to put the work in. Uh, I did an overhead remote in uh, Beijing Olympics of uh, Nata, Nastia Lukan, the gymnast, in the floor exercise. Now we I do a lot of overheads in. Uh, in gymnastics, but uh, they're usually over some specific device. The floor exercise is an area about, I guess it's maybe 50 by 50, where the gymnasts 
do their moves all over the place. But I, I knew I'd seen a routine. And I knew there was one spot where she did what they call the deer leap. And she throws her head up to, the, to look up the ceiling. Um, so I put that camera up every time for every practice session, for every every time that she did the team and the individual on, on the floor exercise. And I, I did get a picture. I, it was not a perfect picture, but it was, it was a really good picture. And I, I would just say that I w never would have known what I would have gotten if I hadn't done it every time. So uh, there's a lot of persistence and just believing in the fact that sometimes this is going to work. And, and, you know, getting a picture like that, getting a G Gabby Douglas overhead uh, picture, that's what keeps you doing it. Because that when the Gabby Douglas picture uh, overhead on the balance beam, well, gymnasts almost never look up when they're on the balance beam. They're looking at the beam. But there was one moment in her routine where she threw her head back and looked up. And I made what I, I consider one of my one of my best pictures, one of my favorite pictures. But I have done that balance beam for years and I've never had anything, any anything off that. I always do that overhead remote whenever it's possible and uh, never really gotten a thing. Uh, but I kept doing it and boom, I was rewarded. So I think that's a, a point about remotes is persistence. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Persistence, safety. Um, at the Olympics, permission is a long, involved process. Yeah. Uh, as the events, uh, even even if you're you're doing something at your local high school, uh, you really need to make sure everybody knows you're doing it and everybody's okay with it because you don't want to be the guy that everybody's turning in horror and saying, "What's that guy doing up on that?" You know, wherever. Uh, you want to clear it. Uh, in advance and make sure everybody's good with it and that you're safe with it. Absolutely. And I think that, that comes down to, you know, when you're, when you're doing remote cameras is, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta prepare for it. You know, you gotta have the equipment ready before you leave. You need to have an idea what picture you want to make. You know, let's you know, just yeah. use the simple idea or concept of, you know, a soccer goal remote, which is right. te technically is kind of as simple as you can probably get. Right. Um, but still, it takes a lot of preparation between the equipment, between talking to people. You can't just walk out during the soccer match and right. stick a camera down and walk away. It doesn't work like that. You know, it doesn't work like yeah. that. And yeah. You need to get permission. You need to talk to um, whoever is in charge, whether it's uh, the sports information directors with a school. Um, the PR. PR department. Uh, PR yeah. department with a professional team. There's, you know, sometimes... In certain colleges and high school situations, it comes down to the referee in charge. Like, yeah, the referee has the final. In, in most high, high schools, in most states, the res, referee has the final say. Uh, so that's all, uh, you know, it's all important. I, I, I'm talking about the soccer goal remote. Uh, I teach a workshop every year up in Northern California. I teach a couple, and we are fortunate to shoot the San Jose Quakes um, uh, MLS soccer team. And for three years, they would not allow uh, goal remotes. And I would point out all the Premier League soccer, you always see that, the World Cup, but they were adamant. Last year, they finally allowed us, and, and we made – Really a great picture. One of my students made just a, a classic soccer remote goalie, totally horizontal off the ground, ball coming in, everything right in there. So it was nice, but it took us, you know, again, uh, you just have to keep at it, persistence. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I think something that's popped up when you mentioned that story, something we haven't talked about yet, was is focus. Um, focus is such a critical part of yeah. setting up a remote camera. In general, you're you never. Sometimes it's going to be autofocus, but those are very rare circumstances. Yeah, I, I never do it. I never yeah. do it. He might do it, but I don't. I, don't do I've, <laughs> I have personally only put a remote camera for myself or any other photographer on autofocus less than five times, yeah. like in less than five cameras in, in my career. Okay. There's very specific need, you yeah. know, and yeah. the reason to do that. But 99% of the time, 99.99% of the time, it can be manually focused. And um, that's something you need to remember. You can't just let the camera be auto-focusing yeah. and searching. You've got to... You've got to figure that everything is as precise as it could possibly be. Yeah, and, ta wrong. and tape down like crazy. Not only your focus, your aperture, your shutter speed, anything that could be changed uh, just by, because 
maybe there's somebody putting up a remote right next to you. And very often at large events where there's we're not even talking inches of tolerance, we're talking millimeters of tolerance. Yeah. You know, putting and I, cameras in an area this large. And it's it's an art, but it's it's competing for space and some people are more... Uh, oh, everybody's great at the Olympics, aren't they? <laughs> sometimes, you, you know, there's good people to work with who care and who are more considerate of others. And a lot of times, there's photographers who are not considerate of yes, others. And, yes, yes. You know, you just got to be very careful and aware. That's where it comes back to keep checking it. You know, things like the World Series, the last World Series, I, I you know, my remotes were set up for, you know, celebration at the end of Game 7 at Dodger Stadium between the you know, Astros and the Dodgers. And... Even though I had it, I checked it 10 or 15 times before the game started, I was still running in the seventh and eighth innings. I was running back to the camera every inning to make sure that it hasn't moved. And, yeah. you know, that's he's got to babysit it sometimes. This is the name of the game every yeah. once in a while. So, yeah, it, it, it's all it's all a very mental thing. The key is to do it all, do it precisely and not let it distract you from the fact that you're really still. A photographer hired to shoot a game with the camera that you have in your hand and yeah. again remotes are a bonus and they're wonderful and they can take a lot of energy and effort but in your head you've got to keep yourself focused on on the game at hand and that's where that preparation and having being prepared leads to confidence and yeah. if you know that 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 rig is as solid as that can possibly be and you're confident in it and you know that you've done all your homework and you've either ran your hard line or you've you know, really, really tested your radios to make sure they're going to work. And you know, when you press that button that the remote's going to fire, that allows you to not worry about it. To and take that deep breath and say, okay, let's, let's, let's shoot hand. the action. Yeah. 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 So uh, that's a few stories and a lot of advice about remotes, setting them up, getting them to work, not getting them stolen, hopefully. Uh, we will uh, have some more videos on remotes on the actual physical setting them up. So we'll see you soon. Uh, watch, learn, and subscribe.